94.5, 3 w, 3 w S. Johnny Hartwell on the phone with me is a Grammy Award winner. He's been in the movies mm-hmm. all over TV, True Detective, California Cation, Supernatural, most recently The Goldbergs, most notably General Hospital. Mm-hmm. He's had two best-selling books, including an autobiography. His new album, Orchestrating My Life, is coming out on Friday, uh, where he's reworked some of his biggest songs with an orchestra. Uh, Rick Springfield, good morning. Good morning. Uh, there's too bad we don't have anything to talk about. What a resume! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I like I like working. <laughs> Working class dog, you got it right the first time, didn't you? Jeez. I know we're bringing back uh, my dog from Working Class Dog as a, as a kind of the the iconic image for because I think that album's almost forty now. Oh, wow. hard to believe. Oh, Jesse's girl would be in her sixties. Um, well, speaking of that, I, I have a question about Jesse's girl. We'll wait till, uh, eight, till the end. But uh, let's talk about your new album, Orchestrating My Life, which is coming out this Friday. Uh, how did this come about? Uh, I, I was actually invited to Germany to do some uh, show. They have a show over there called Rock Meets Classics, where they take some of your songs and they, you know, they have a band, but they also orchestrate with a, like a 40, 50 piece orchestra. And we do six six-week tour of Germany with that, and it was really great. I enjoyed it. I was very frightened at first, thinking it would, uh, you know, because when, when we play live, uh, I, it's it's a pretty open mm-hmm. open and, uh, uh, arrangement, you know. But uh, here, once it's written on paper, you got to stick with the arrangements, and if you screw up, it's like it could be a train wreck. But it was really fun, and we brought it back here and did a couple of shows here and then decided to uh, record uh, re-record the greatest hits and add the orchestra. So we, it's a band and an orchestra. Um, and it, you know, I, I tried to stay true to the, the sound and the, uh, and, and, and the whole vibe of, of the original songs because, uh, when you do, re- I sometimes bought re-records and I don't like them. Most of the time they suck. They're, <laughs> you know, the singer's been singing the song a hundred, hundred thousand times and they go all over the place with the melody and it's not like I remember. So we stuck real close to, uh, to the original vibe on these, and then we, but you know, with the technology, they sound bigger, and uh, and then we added the orchestra, and it, it's uh, some of them real, I'm really, really happy with. All right, let's play a little sample of uh, track one. Uh, here's the original version of of Christina. Here you go. <laughs> Now, here is a kind of uh, reorchestrated version of it. Let's give this a look. You can really hear the instrumentation on that. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a tough thing because there's like, you know, a 40-piece orchestra plus a band plus plus me and, and background. It's, it's a lot of sonic information to, to cut through, but... Uh, I, I think it's a really good balance. I could have sworn that these were uh, original tracks that you just kind of put put into it yeah. with some orchestra. But you really re-recorded everything, even your vocals. Re-recorded everything. Yeah, you, know, you can you know you can't take the original tracks. That's why people. That's why artists re-record their their hits because they they belong to the original record company. You can't do anything to them, so they re-record them. And a lot of the times, like I said, they don't. You know, they don't stick real close to the original thing. And the original song, as you heard it, was a thing that, you know, is, is spiritually moving to you as a kid. It, that was what... That's what we want to hear. Remember, brings back a lot of memories and everything. So I stuck real close to the arrangements. I I copied the vocal uh, style, although I would... I, admittedly, I would sing them differently now because some of the phrasing, I kind of went, whoa, I guess i got to stick with that. But uh, <laughs> overall, it, was, it came out... Uh, uh, incredibly, incredibly sonically close to the originals, which is important to me because of re-record. Well, let's prove his point. Here's a, uh, here's his rework version of "Don't Talk to Strangers." Crap, Rick! Your voice is fantastic. It hasn't aged at all. <laughs> is that that's yeah, the rework? Wow! Okay. It sounds like the original. It really does. I mean, with obviously yeah, with it's, strings it's, in the back. Yeah. It, 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 and the, the band's bigger too because you know there's just better technology now. And uh, I have my own studio, and and uh, we can you know mess with it and make it uh, sound bigger and better. Um, 
And it, so it's kind of how you remember it when you first heard it. I mean, I'll hear sometimes hear old tracks that I like and go, wow, it sounds kind of thin, but I still love it, you know. But, uh, yeah, they, we've made them sound bigger and better, and uh, but, but didn't lose the vibe of the original song, which I think is really important, especially on when you're redoing songs that are familiar to, to a lot of people. Nice. There's one new song on it called... Um, irreplaceable that i wrote for my mom my mom died two years ago and um, i wanted one new song on it so that uh that we could kind of you know mess around with but the other I, and then there's the one about my dad that i wrote in 1985 for my father called my father's chair that when i did the original track it was just me on piano and like a string pad where was this one it's just the orchestra and it really uh it lifts the song it, that's the only one that, that's different from the original um because i thought it warranted it well, speaking mm -hmm. of uh, irreplaceable, let's give this a listen. And that is a song dedicated to your mother, huh? Yeah, yeah. My mom died two years ago. You know, as a writer, you. You use uh, use that kind of stuff, and I wanted something for her. Yeah, it's such a great song. I love it. It's really nice. Oh, hey, yeah. uh, all right. So uh, we're running out of time. So I want to get to my Jesse's girl. Um, uh, <laughs> you know, obviously that song has touched so many's lives, mm. and I had such a crush on Renee Serafino. And the, I was being friend zoned, and that song came out, and I both loved it and hated that song at the same time because I could identify it. How many? Yeah, I think I think it uh, it definitely touched. It, it was a kind of forbidden love song, which is always a a good a good theme. But it was real. It was true. It was uh, the girls. I felt the same over, and she wanted nothing to do with me, and so I took my sexual angst home and wrote, wrote a song about it. There you go. So that song has touched so many lives. What what is the strangest story of somebody coming up and uh, maybe a song that you've done touched their lives? Is there a really peculiar story that you can share with us? Uh, well, they're, they're strange. There was, you know, I mean, uh, one girl said she was in a terrible car accident, and she had, uh, I think, Jesse's girl at Don't Talk to Strangers is a ringtone. <laughs> and the paramedics were, were, she was going out. The paramedics were uh, trying to get her to stay alive, and she said they told her that her heart was dropping, and suddenly her phone rang. And Jesse's girl, or Don't Talk to Strangers, came on, and she started to come back. Whoa, doctor! <laughs> you are the doctor. And they brought her, and they brought her back, and uh, yeah, yeah. I that story. I was pretty amazed. Oh, the oh. power of music! I love that. Yeah, I love that. The power of music. It's not the, you know anything to do with me. It's just the power of music. And or, I, I, the, wow. the power you of you save somebody's uh, of the life. iPhone. Really? You don't. We can't live without our fi iPhones. That will yeah. bring anybody back from the dead. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Rick, Rick Springfield. Your iPhone, just in case. The yeah. new album is coming out Friday. It's such a pleasure. Next time you come to Pittsburgh, please stop by. We'd love to, you know, support. And anything. you know what? When you come to town, I have a horse. I invite everyone we speak with. If you want to come out and do a trail ride, we'll take you out through the park and let you go for a ride if that's something you're interested in doing. I, I used to ride horses when I was a kid. One of the things yeah. when I when I lived in England, uh, yeah, we 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 went to uh, I had ho horse riding lessons, so I learned the English style. But yeah, that's I'd, me. I fox hunt. <laughs> So we do fox hunting here in Pittsburgh. We would love to have you come out and ride with us. All right. I've All right. got a big well, horse for you. Boxes, His name's but... Romeo. How about that? Hey, right. Rick, good <laughs> luck with all the projects, and there's too many to mention here at the end. So <laughs> that's been right. a... Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks. Take care.